All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Franco Perez up in an equally sunny, I'm sure, Bay Area. How are you doing, Frank? Franco? Good, good, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And Franco, having grown up in a family with an unstable housing situation, Franco's on a mission to create affordable housing in Silicon Valley. Uh, he discovered that the Bay Area's mobile home parks offer an abundance of underused land with great growth potential. Uh, you've established a devoted team of like-minded individuals who believe that their positive impact equals success. Um, inspired to reimagine mobile homes and expand affordable home uh, housing opportunities in the Bay Area, your talented team strives to unlock the pathway to home ownership. And, and that's one of what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about your journey to mobile to getting into the mobile home business and why it represents such a great opportunity. And as we were saying before we came on air, uh, I uh, when I first came over from Ireland, I came in the mid to late 90s. I came to Silicon Valley. I've lived in I've lived in San Francisco. I've lived in the Bay Area. I'm now obviously residing in San Diego. You know that it's an ongoing issue, affordable housing. I mean, it's almost a joke when you say affordable housing in the same sentence as Silicon Valley or Southern California. So so first of all, Frank, could just tell me your quickly your journey to to mobile homes? Sure. Um I, I guess a quick story is grew up or moved here with immigrant family from the Philippines. My parents um, had an unfortunate situation where they divorced. My dad was the main breadwinner. He left. And then I was uh, about 17, 18 years old with my single mom just trying to survive in the Silicon Valley. And, and I immediately dropped out of school, started working full time. And I remember at the end of every single month, it was so painful just trying to make ends meet just so I could pay for rent. And mm. At the end of every month, I even had to borrow money from my boss just to make ends meet. And I remember thinking, why is the world like this? We're good people, you know, and, and why is it that we don't, that the wealthy are able to obtain real estate? And why is it that we're stuck in this rat race, right? And, mm -hmm. and long story short, I got into real estate. I became an agent for a while. I did that for a year or two. And I got financially secure that way. But after a while, I really hated being a real estate agent because I found it to be a world where agents just help the richest people they can find the most expensive homes that they can. And it really wasn't making it. And I had to, it wasn't making a difference for those people that were in my shoes back then that were going through the pains that I was going through. And I really devoted my life to try to find out what can we do to help those people that are on the edge that can't afford real estate yet that are currently in that rental rat race? And how can we help make their lives a little bit better? Right. And from there, I checked out government housing, really didn't find anything I liked there and mm -hmm. accidentally came across mobile homes and come to find out my first initial thought of mobile homes was like trailer trash and the place mm -hmm. for criminal. I think that's what most people think yeah. is like, low quality housing, low quality mm -hmm. people. But when you actually dive into these communities, you'll come to find out they're actually great places in their group. And the people in these communities are starting their wealth building, building journey through mobile homes in these mobile home parks. And a lot of these opportunities that are normally only accessible by the rich and wealthy of ownership is, you know, they get the benefits of leveraging a loan to buy an asset and building their right. net worth and they get the the benefit of appreciation and tax benefits but renters don't get that the low income mm -hmm. families that can't afford housing can't get that but mobile homes is a perfect hybrid model and a stepping stone out of the rental rat race into their beginning entry level ownership and their right. and starting their wealth building journey and then from there it helps them enable to be able to afford single family later down the line and after yeah. finding that out, built our business around just helping people get out of that rat race into that. And then now in recent years, we're converting a lot of old single wide trailers into beautiful 2000 square foot, three bed, two bath, 12 foot high ceiling homes and, and just a, right. as luxurious as they could be. And yeah, that's what so we're doing. Yeah, so so you just mentioned there, obviously the first issue there is um, the stigma of um, of mobile homes and you know most people as you said associate them being kind of a bit crazy and in probably some crazy area somewhere out 
Um, but like where I live, I mean, there's mobile home parks on the sea front, on the waterfront. You know, there's there, there's a lot of different ones anywhere. I guess that's probably that was your first step. Was it actually to destigmatize and realize that there's a, just like houses, there's different areas, there's different trailer parks. Absolutely. I mean, just like if we think about apartments, you know, there's apartment complexes. You want you don't want your kids going around, and and it's mm -hmm. a very bad quality. And then there's luxury apartments just like very high end and it's that same spectrum with mobile home parks yes there are trailer park like home, uh, mobile home parks but there's also beautiful resort like mobile home communities that have spas swimming pools gyms and that sort of thing and they shouldn't all be written off as a bad thing and right. they should be seen as an option uh, to get out of to to be used as a housing option to to leverage for people that that can't afford single family homes just yet. Right. And I guess the other part too, um, Franco, is a lot of people probably wouldn't even consider that they or even think about uh, getting one, but also that they could get a mortgage or they could get something to help them with a mobile home. Cause everybody always is, it thinks like, Oh, well it has to be like it's an apartment or a, or a, or a condo or a house. Yeah. So there, so there's a, there's so many misconceptions and I know we're short, we don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but there are several loan options and we help with that as well. And, and that's something that we will all be with and getting more backing for funding. We have 25 year mortgages where you can put 10% down and because of the much lower price point, that down payment is significantly less than what a single family home would be. Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, when, when, when people start to start to look at this or when, um, or when you're going to build, like you said, you've done some developments recently. Um, what are you, what are, what are you looking for when you go to develop a, 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 a park or a, um, a, a trailer place? How do you, how do you assess the right fit, where it should be, what kind of, uh, and, and what kind of, uh, facilities or dwellings you should put in there? Yeah. So I guess the first is really assessing the the impact and the housing need in that specific mm -hmm. area. For example, San Diego is a perfect example of this. San Jose, yeah. for example, a, a two bedroom apartment uh, in this area is about thirty two hundred dollars a month right. to pay just to rent. Now, the median single family home price is one point five million dollars. And with that big of an issue and we come to realize that there's a ton of mobile home parks here. And the alternative is what their payment could look like for a mobile home could be about, if you buy a $300,000 mobile home, your mortgage will look like about $2,500 and your space rent would be about $1,000, which equates to about $3,500 a month, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more than you're paying rent for an apartment, but you get a ton of those benefits we talked about, which is which is a lot of what the wealthy are doing. They're appreciating their value. Yeah. They're building their net worth and paying something that they actually own as an asset that they can sell later, right? Mm -hmm. And not just that, but instead of a single family home, you'd have to come up with a six digit down payment, but on a mobile home, you'd only have to come up with about $30,000, right? right? It's much more accessible. And, mm -hmm. and this is what's not being seen out there as an option. Right. And then obviously, depending on where they're located, if it's an area, I mean, like you said, around here, San Jose, where, you know, it's already a, a difficult market. But I presume then they the appreciation on those is, is similar to the, the market that they're in. Yes, it's pretty similar. It basically matches the percentage wise of what real estate's appreciating. So if homes have appreciated 4% that year, you'll see an equivalent amount on average with the mobile homes as well. Now, these are very, I know those numbers that I mentioned are very intimidating nationwide, sure. but we're also seeing these ratios in other high uh, density markets, just like Atlanta, just like Austin, um, like you're in San Diego as well. Now the prices on, might not be a single family home, um, 1.5 million, but you'll also see that stepping stone in between. Like in Austin, mm -hmm. I just did a report for them where average single family was 600,000, average mobile, uh, average rent was about 1,300, but the mobile homes were about 180,000, I believe. But you'll see that kind of trend being a middle point for people. Right.
And and one of the things that's obvious is that it's a great uh, obviously for for you know for people who are struggling with housing it's great anyway. But as younger, one of the complaints is obviously as younger people come into the market, you know, they say younger people around here or whatever, you know, priced out of the market from the get go, never going to be able to own somewhere where they grew up if that's where they chose if that's where they choose to live. Uh, so how can you, because I can guarantee you, I'm pretty sure, like my son's 80, I'm pretty sure if I did a straw poll of him and his friends, none of them would ever have considered a mobile home, right? So how do you how do you start to um, make this appealing to that generation? Because it seems like such an obvious stepping stone for, you know, younger people coming into the market. Yeah, so what's, what's really worked for us lately, and, and you talk about younger generations, we have to understand how they think as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So we actually cater our whole design process around, you know, at first, which is millennials. And then we have Gen Z coming in as well. What are these finishes that they're looking for? These very modern contemporary looks, these open floor plans. And that's exactly what we build. The second to that is understanding how they think. Right. A lot of the information they gather isn't from reading blogs or reading a book mm -hmm. or reading the news. They gather it from social media through vis uh, through visuals, right? And that's why video is so important. And that's what's gotten us to grow it uh, as fast as we did is our YouTube channel really showcases what a mobile home is. And our biggest problem is that stigma. So when people mm -hmm. actually see the visuals of what this looks like, wow, this is a mobile home, then they're shocked. And then they understand like, shoot, maybe this is something that we should consider right and mm -hmm. doing it in long form doing it in short form doing we do silly <laughs> hilarious com comedic videos as well and, and just really just to bring attention around mobile homes and it should be seen mm -hmm. as a valuable thing yeah and so are you seeing is this a market that you think is going to grow i mean do you see great uh, uh expansion opportunities here because it just seems like the the housing problem is the perennial one that doesn't seem to be getting solved and even when they start to try and put in you know more um low-income housing or more affordable housing i mean we put it around here i mean it's not really that affordable to be perfectly honest at the end of the day it's kind of a misnomer maybe a little more affordable in comparison to something that's super expensive but it's not really that affordable so do you see do you see this opportunity sp uh, uh, spreading and do you see more people actually considering this as an option oh absolutely the way i see it it is it really is the last stand for affordable housing and in the ownership way right we have a lot of like you mentioned i kind of consider it as false uh, affordable housing sure. you know the people are building homes with reduced rents but what is that really doing for people it's creating a place for them temporarily but they're not able to build wealth through it right mm -hmm. now with mobile homes they really start that ownership journey and it's really becoming a model that's helping people get out of that rat race. And, and you'll see when they sell that they're able to really boost their family's financial stability. And that's what I see. The other is really the advancements in construction of how we're building this. With When it comes to what the, the issues we're facing in the near future, construction is getting more and more expensive. We're housing's mm -hmm. getting more, more expensive. And we think about it like cars. Cars were originally only built for the rich and wealthy, and it was only until that we were able to build these in a factory at scale, at a streamlined process, that cars were available for everybody. And that's exactly how we're building these mobile homes now. We're building these in a factory on an assembly line, at a at the most at the most process driven way as possible, mm -hmm. keeping the cost of construction way lower and keeping it affordable for the consumer. And if we don't innovate and change the way we're building homes now, we're going to be in a huge problem later down the line, right? And it's so important that, and that's why this is becoming trending a lot lately is because what else are the options? There's no other housing options. Incomes aren't rising as much as uh, mm -hmm. housing prices are going. And, and we need more ways to be able to protect that financial freedom element for the middle class. Um, and and home ownership is really that key to that financial freedom. And then of those, um, one, the, the more modern ones that you're making nowadays, uh, are they um, pretty customizable in some ways? Because I think that's the other thing that I think there's a lot of research for the younger generations coming through is that they want to make everything theirs, and so there needs to be options. So, I, do you when you're um, with a mobile home, do you? 
do you get lots of options, even small ones, just to make it a little more personal? There, there's depending on the area, there's different yeah. uh, options that can be picked. Now, there's pros and cons to being customizable, right? Sure. When we build something repeatedly, we're able to lower the cost because we're mm -hmm. building that unit 30 to 60 uh, different times in a year versus if we create a custom home, then we'll have to engineer it. We'd have to build it sure. that way, right? Now, I think on the customizable elements that we do provide for our customers are the end work, which is the flooring, the, if they want yeah. carpet in certain areas, if they want a different granite or quartz material, or if they want appliances. And that's really what we're customizing. And then what's really popular lately is our tech gadgets. We have smart mm -hmm. homes, which is, with the smart thermostats, the cameras, smart doorbells, and that sort of thing, which we were able to add on, and also the smart switches and smart lights into these mobile homes as well. And that's become yeah. something that a lot of young generations love. And and I presume in places like this, probably solar panels too, yeah? Yeah, there's there's mixed reviews with solar panels in these areas. It's it's We haven't advanced yet to be able to make that as effective as right. um, in single family homes, mm -hmm. but we we haven't yet really used solar panels just yet right 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 but um it, it it's it's interesting so what are um so where are your plans to where are the areas you're expanding into i mean i know you're focused on silicon valley but you do elsewhere i mean how what what are what areas are booming for your mobile home business um most of our stuff is in this bay area uh we just started doing stuff in los angeles market and san diego market um but we're, we are exploring other areas as well. And we also do consulting for mobile home park owners that want to right. kind of raise the value of their communities. They have old units that they want to replace with new. So I have a client in Atlanta and one in Austin that we're helping kind of um, do the consulting and logistics of re uh, replacing their old units with mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. And then just for just explain to somebody who's never lived in a, in one of these parks, you know, what some of the one, you know, just say kind of a mid range one, what it's like, what kind of amenities are, what's the what's the style, the lifestyle like? Yeah, it, it, it really is amazing. And you'll have to see it. And, and that's why I'm passionate about making these videos, because you have to see it visually. And you go mm -hmm. into these. If you see it in our YouTube channel, you'll see exactly what they look like. They usually have a very beautiful uh, clubhouse area with a park and that sort of thing. And there's a huge sense of community because keep in mind that everyone that lives in these mobile homes actually are an owner and in, um, they have a big investment in their mobile homes. So they mm -hmm. all take care of their unit and they all care about their neighbors. They care about their yard and they all, they all have that sense of community, not like what you would see in an apartment complex or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 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 you know, you'll see kids playing around and, and such a great lifestyle. They have events for like Christmas events and Thanksgiving events. Um, but every park's a bit different. You know, sure. We have a park. We have senior communities. We have family communities. And the, they're now having like a bunch of like dog parks and creating these events to really build that sense of community and lifestyle in these parks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I, mean, I think that's a really important point there you make about the sense of community because you're right, you don't tend to get that in in um, apartments or even even townhome complex. You know, they you can get a lot of transient. A lot of them are rented out, so there's a lot of a transient pop people coming and going. You know, renting for a year or whatever. There's, um, but this, as you say, is this is this is this is more like old style community living, if you like, where you know people probably really get you know to have a real investment even even probably more so than maybe in a, a housing area exactly especially in these senior communities you really see them be be able to look out for their neighbors and take care of them, and they'll have like different poker events and that sort of thing and it's really interesting uh because everyone there is like you know has looks out for each other and that sort of thing no. Well, listen, um, uh, Frank. This has been this has been fascinating because, as you said, I mean, I think this is a great option uh, um, for people at any stage of their lives. It's particularly, I think, for for young people, and just removing that stigma and saying, "Yeah, you can get on the prop property ladder. You don't have to wait till you can afford a townhome or an expensive luxury apartment or a home that you can get in on the property ladder on something that you know maybe is a fantastic place to start because it's nice and kind of contained." Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely something that people should take a look at and 
and, and just fee- see for themselves uh, online or, yeah, or anyone. Absolutely. Well, all of Franco's information will be below this video. But before we go, Franco, do tell people a little bit more about the business. Yeah, I mean, I, for us, we really try to be that that anything and everything around mobile homes, whether it's people buying or selling or just want general advice around financial, uh, the financials of it and how it can help you get out of that rental rent race. So and all of our stuff, you can Google us at Franco Mobile Homes if you need. Yeah, and I would encourage people to check it out, like the videos that Franco mentioned. So maybe you're going to get a whole, maybe you're going to get totally surprised about how fantastic these look. And as I said, maybe this is an option you've never considered. So definitely worth considering. Hey, I think it's a, it's it's fantastic work what you're doing. It's it's well needed, and I wish you all the best of luck. Appreciate it, John, and thanks for having me here. By the way, yeah, thank you, thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.